Hello everyone and welcome back. It's time for another story. This is from Reddit user OtterBassist. This is Basebeard, a youngster's introduction into the neckbeard archetype. Ooh, fancy. Hey Moonhorse, hello, and Sango. She's not here, but she'd say hi if she could. First things first, I love your channel and all the stories you read. Oh, you're too kind. You're wonderful people, and I seriously admire the community that you've built and fostered. Stop. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for providing a space for survivors, fellow beard bait, and those who have witnessed the unreal cringe of the Dorito dusted. <laughs> what a way with words you have. The impact you have on so many people's lives is profound. Please never change. Well, I don't plan on changing anytime soon, so you got that going. But all sentiments out of the way, onto the Chronicles of Cringe. Apologies for format and grammar and whatnot. This is my first post on Reddit, and English is my first language. I'm just a dingus. I relate to that. Burn pits and explosions are a hell of a drug. I relate to that too. Also, this is a big story. So for a little of background, I'm a trans guy from a small town, actually a village technically, according to Wikipedia, in Colorado. Being from a small, conservative country town, I spent the first 23 years of my life in the closet. I existed simply as Otter. Not a male, not a female, just an awkward, in-between kind of person. I wasn't the stereotypical beard bait, but apparently in the eyes of the beard, there is no box to fit in. I had no interest in anime, superheroes, and comics weren't even a blip on my radar, and I didn't even dress remotely cute or attractive. My go-to is a pair of baggy jeans and flannel. The anthropologist in me is still absolutely fascinated with how I could have so many encounters with this breed of man-child, despite the fact that I was about as interesting as a slice of white bread. So, little cast, Otter, myself, overwhelming case of boy brain, social anxiety with enough charisma to mask it, and the passion of a blazing case of chlamydia for music. Did I mention you have an interesting way with words? Mongoose, my ride or die best friend since the age of three. Goose is really tall, like 6'5", and shares my love for listening and making music. He's the big brother I never asked for, but I'm glad I have. And then there's Basebeard, the beard himself. This guy had it all. I never had the privilege of experiencing his beard stink, however, I've heard the tales. Greasy blonde bowl cut, mad case of ginger beard syndrome that never reached higher than his chin, and a bit of a unit as much as one can be in drumline. I'll elaborate later. It all began sophomore year of high school. My school was naturally a very small one, with my class being about 28 strong at the time. Puberty had nearly finished throwing me through an old ringer with the rusty metal plate labeled 404Y chromosome not found. Fuck you. If memory serves, this was in late September, early October. This is important because of how late it was in the marching band season. Mongoose had told me to meet with him in the band room during our study hall period because he and our band teacher, Mr. V, a seriously lovable ex-marine with an affinity for Mountain Dew Code Red and racing video games, needed to speak to me about something. Upon reaching the band room, I found Mongoose and Mr. V speaking in soft tones by the teacher's desk. My anxiety went from scheduling a doctor's appointment to giving a public speech wearing a pair of pants that are too big with no belt. They both clammed up on seeing me enter and turned to face me. Uh, Otter, I have something to ask you, began Mr. V. I slowly paced over to them as Mr. V placed one of his secret stash dues on the desk to sweeten the deal. No pun intended. As you know, I help with the marching band in next town over. Our school was too small to have a marching band program. Well, something has come up as of late and has potential to wreak havoc on the entire show. Basically, third base drummer is failing two classes and it's too late in the season for him to recover. We need a pinch drummer and you're pretty much the only one that can do it. I looked to Mongoose, who played snare drum for the marching band, and, and he sported a pleading, almost pitiful look. I'm not going to lie, this is going to be hard. You'll have to learn all the music and field positions before regionals in about two weeks. But if you pull this off, you can really save us this season. 
I knew exactly what Mr. V was doing. He's giving me the rare opportunity to be a hero. He had talked me up to the sister school's band directors and secured my spot. He's just pulling out all the stops to make sure I'd agree. And yeah, hesitantly I did. He hit all the right buttons and I'm in. Upon agreeing, Mongoose nearly crushed my spine in a soul-cracking hug and he proceeded to give me the verbal diarrhea rundown of how awesome and fun marching band is for the rest of the day. That day after school, we head over to the next town for practice, and Goose did not stop spouting facts and anecdotes about marching band and going on about how it'll help me with my musical ways and, and ways I didn't even think possible. But then I saw his face fall. Oh, shit. Uh, but, like, heads up, uh, the bass drum you'll be replacing, he's kind of a weirdo. He's going to be teaching you what you need to know, just don't fall for his shit. Uh, dude, I'm kind of a weirdo? No, not the same kind. This guy's fucking gross. Okay, so... I figured maybe he hadn't mastered the art of deodorant and his mom had recently stopped doing laundry for him. No big deal, right? Well, technically I wasn't wrong. Mongoose, Mr. V, and I arrive at this next town high school, and they bring me to the director's office. Do our introductions, they outfit me with music, shirt, what's called a dot book, which is basically a map of where I'll be moving to in accordance with the other band kids during a show. After my briefing is complete, Mongoose took me down to the fabled drum closet. I had heard many stories of this room. I felt inferior experiencing for myself. There in the spacious closet was the official HQ of the Next Town Cool Kids Club. And here I was, just a visitor. To my delight, I'm welcomed with open arms. I can see why Mongoose is so close with these guys. Each of them is a different flavor of strange. First order of business was to give me drumline call sign and a bandana, staple of the revered Next Town drumline thing. But all good times must come to an end, sadly. As the other basses and the snares were fitting the drum harness to me, we heard the door to the closet open, and in drudges bass beard. The very one I was warned about, not only by Mongoose, but my new drumline friends. He sported a tie-dye hoodie and some ill-fitting jeans. The too tight kind of ill-fitting, not too loose. His voice radiated with pompous cockiness as he spoke. Oh, you must be the new kid. Not gonna lie, I was expecting someone bigger. After all, this is the heaviest drum in the drum line, he said in a slight, nasally, yet somehow confident voice. Now, I'd like to address that this was not, in fact, the heaviest drum. It clocked in just a hair over 30 pounds with all the bells and whistles and covers and clickers and spare stickers and the harness. The tenors or quads, they're about 50, actually. Thankfully, our tenor guy was so done with this dude's shit that he opted to keep his silence. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little intimidated. I'm a little out of shape, I'm not short, about 5'8", but at the time I was so scrawny that I could fit through a closed door. On top of that, the other band kids had months of physical conditioning on me. Drumline instruments are a bitch to march with because the weight of the instrument extends outward from your center of gravity, so your back and core muscles are constantly engaged to keep up that perfect posture needed for the good scores. Also, band camp takes place in July, so the others had ample time to build up. But not to have my budding masculinity put in question, I persisted. The entire time during practice, Beard stood way too close. Rather than, okay, for this set you'll move here, five yards away, second base, he opted to stand right fucking next to me, making all movements awkward and very restricted. When he would demonstrate how to play a certain part, he would grab my hand, trying to force his fingers between mine, ew, and use my hand to play the part. He referred to me as his student and protege the entire time. Which would have been fine were it not for the affectionate tone that he kept using. On our way back to the band room at the end of practice, he placed his arm around me and walked with me like that. It was kind of uncomfortable, but uh, I brushed it off as an awkward gesture of friendship. Flash forward to we're all packed up and getting ready to leave. 
you should give me your number just in case you have any questions. <laughs> Basebeard says while grinning ear to ear. I'm on the fence about this, but his justification did make sense, so I gave him my number and a decision I would learn. It would open the floodgates, let's put it that way. The entire two-week period was much the same. Stand spooning closely, forced hand-holding, and him standing or getting way too fucking close to me. But eventually, he got bold. He would text me non-band related things, he would send pictures of anime girls asking for my input, and for context, I'm a Peter Pan looking motherfucker. I look a lot younger than my real age. My 15 at the time could be perceived as a very tall 12 with my baby face. The anime girls he sent me all look like small children. Ew. These conversations would go roughly like this. Mm, isn't she so cute? I mean, I guess. Big guys are cute on anything, right? Yeah, I'm kind of a lolly guy. <laughs> the fuck is a lolly? I like girls that look really young. This one kind of looks like you. <laughs> I realize I'm the one making that voice, but I just made myself uncomfortable. Then Basebeard would send me a picture of some anime girl in a uniform or some shit. In Enter dysphoria. As a coping mechanism, I would just roast the shit out of him, asking him if he was blind or saying that he was creepy and she looked like she's eight. For some reason, this seemed to just spur him on. I like Cinderella. It gives me a challenge. Please hit him with something heavy. He would reply this to all my insults. Right, because it was so easy for him to attract girls that he craved a challenge. <laughs> Two agonizing weeks drag on and regionals finally arrive. I'm sweating bullets. I still don't feel 100% about this show, and I'm terrified I'm going to drop a stick or trip or follow my ass with a massive bass drum strapped to me. Long story short, we actually did fine. We qualified for state championships, in fact, but those are minor details. After the show, Basebeard made it a point to hunt me down, wait until Mongoose was away doing whatever the fuck, and glomp me Ew. from behind using his jacket. I would push away every time muttering, dude, what the fuck? And each time he'd give me this predatory grin and say, hmm, firing. Ew. I could not fucking shake this guy. As the state championships approached, my drumline friends started buckling down on him, even going as far as to bring a spare hoodie for me to disguise myself with. Unfortunately, no matter how many stay the fuck away from otter talks he got, his thirst for this androgynous otter sand only grew to an intensity. Oh lord. State champions finally arrive. It's cold, late October, Colorado day. Kind of snowing, kind of drizzling. And it's like 20-something degrees. I'm freezing my ass off, wearing multiple hoodies and flannels and just trying to stay dry. I'm working on some homework when I feel a presence slumber towards me. For fuck's sake. Hey, you look cold. Yeah, it's freezing and we don't perform for hours. I can help you with that. He proceeds to sit next to me and wrap me in his jacket with him. Honestly, he is warm, so I didn't protest, despite the fact that I'm very irritated. I just want to finish my fucking homework. Mm, algebra, huh? I did all my advanced math classes in freshman year. If you want, I can help you. I did pass with over 100% scores, after all. Yeah, no, I'm alright. I got it covered. Why are you working them out like that? Let me show you how to... Seriously, don't worry about it. I'm almost done. My way is so much faster. Neat. But seriously, don't worry about it. I'm fine. He then just takes the fucking pencil from me. Here, you just... Uh, and that is when I am fucking done. I tune him out as he drones on, clearly making up shit as he went. He starts to fizzle out, and I took the opportunity to pack everything up. Yeah, I'm gonna go find Mongoose and the guys, I said flatly. Oh, I'll come too. 
of fucking course you will. But then he said something that floored me. But I need to pee first, if you want you can come too. Maybe touching the warmest part of my body will warm your hands up. This fucking boy. Uh -uh. Obviously, I declined his creepy as fuck invitation. Instead, I pretended to wait around for him as he entered the restroom and then bolted once the door closed. I met up with my drumline friends and told them everything. Basebeard was kind of a meme in our group, so I told them all about his weird thirstiness. Them, being the bros they were, did a very good job of hiding me from that point on, thus leading me to the conclusion of the tale of Basebeard. Mongoose and the guys were relentless in their self-adopted duty of keeping Basebeard away from me. On the bleachers, they would dive into the seats next to and around me to ensure that I had a force field protecting me from the slimy cringe. They locked Basebeard out of the drum closet every chance they could, especially important since we spent a lot of time in that closet, changing uh, generally in underclothes, you know. Luckily, Basebeard wasn't allowed on the bus, though this didn't stop him from offering his mom to drive me back from events in their car. Yeah, no. Eventually, Basebeard realized that I was not, in fact, going to be his little cindere lolly waifu and moved on to my cousin. But that's another story, and I don't have all the details for that. All I know is that she didn't fall for it either. We did okay at state, and didn't win, whatever, but... For a band with a limp drum line, we were happy to just make it as far as we did. Mongoose and I grew closer, I'm still in touch with my drum line friend six years later, and I did, in fact, grow as a musician, thanks to the discipline and practice of an additional year of marching band that it had instilled in me. I have a handful of more stories of various degrees of beards, if you're interested, and would be happy to write them out. But in the meantime, thank you for reading this, if you did, and I'm happy to announce that I am now fully out as a man in hormone replacement therapy. Things are going great as of now. I've got 99 problems and a beard ain't one. Much love, Moonhorse, and to the rest of the herd. Well, first off, I'm really happy that you're doing a thousand times better and that everything seems to be working out. But, oh, this fucking boy. Oh, this slimy motherfucker. Oh, oh my goodness. I knew we were in trouble as soon as he said that he was the kind who prefers lollies. Just, ew. Fucking ew, alright? No, stop. That's horrible. You're fucking horrible. <sighs> but then the rest of this stuff. Oh my god. I really hope... Again, as I say with a lot of these stories that take place in, like, high schools and shit, I really hope that he grew out of this. I really hope that he, you know, wised the fuck up, realized that this is not working out in his best interest, and stopped being a creepy motherfucker. But we don't really know that, and sometimes they don't. That, that is that is the rub, isn't it? That's the worst part. Sometimes they don't grow out of it, and sometimes it lasts, oh, the years and years. But holy shit, this fucking guy, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, he's just, that's, that's pretty fucking up there in really creepy mode, just... I can't even begin to imagine the horrible shit you went through, and I am super fucking sorry about that, but I will say that I am honestly quite impressed that, you know, given the fact that you were carrying around like a 30 to 40 pound drum, you didn't just accidentally turn the wrong way while he was standing in one direction and accidentally smash it over his fucking head. It's an accident. It's totally an accident. Not intentional. You wouldn't intentionally do that. Come on. Come on now. It's not what... No. It's an accident. Just come on. 
I don't need to expand on that. You already know where that's going. But anyway, thank you all for being here, and thank you all for being a part of this wonderful, wonderful experience. I love you all so very, very much, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye! <laughs>